from Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube, covering MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium 2019, brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome back to Cambridge, Massachusetts, everybody. This is The Cube, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events and we extract the signal from the noise, and we're here at the MIT CDO IQ, the Chief Data Officer Conference. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Paul Gillen. Day two of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Aaron Kalb is here. He's the co-founder and Chief Data Officer of Alation. Aaron, thanks for making the time to come on. Thanks so much, Dave and Paul, for having me. You're welcome. So, words matter. Um, <laughs> You know, and we've been talking about data and big data and the three V's and data is the new oil and all this stuff. You gave a talk this week about, you know, we're maybe not talking the right language when it comes to data. What did you mean by all that? Absolutely, so I get a little bit frustrated by some of these cliches we hear at conference after conference, and the, the one I sort of took aim at in this talk is, is data is, is the new oil. I think what people want to invoke with that is to say, in the same way that oil powered the, the, the industrial age, data's powering the information age, just saying data's really cool and trendy and important, that's true, but there are a lot of other associations and connotations people have with data, and some of them don't really apply as, as, as oh sorry, with oil, and some of them apply as well to data. So is yeah. data, more valuable than oil? <laughs> well, I think they're each valuable in different ways, um, but I think uh, there's a couple issues with the metaphor. Uh, one is that data is scarce and dwindling, and part of the value comes from the fact that it's, that it's so rare, whereas the experience with data is that it's so plentiful and abundant, we're almost drowning in it. And so uh, what I contend is instead of talking about data uh, as compared to oil, we should talk about data compared to water. And, uh, and the idea is, you know, water is very plentiful on, on the planet, but sometimes, you know, if you have salt water or contaminated water, you can't drink it. Water is good for different purposes depending on its form, and so it's all about getting the, the right data for the right purpose. Well, we've, water. We've, we've certainly, at least in my opinion, fought, fought wars, Paul, over, 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 over oil. And over and, water. And certainly <laughs> conflicts over water. Do you think, <laughs> do you, do you think we'll have, be fighting wars over data, or are we already? You know, we might be. One of my favorite <laughs> talks from, from the sessions here was a keynote by the CDO for the Department of Defense who was talking about you know, the civic duty about transparency, but was observing that actually more IP addresses from China and Russia are looking at our public data sets than from within the country. So <laughs> you know, it's definitely a, a resource that uh, can be very powerful. So what was the reaction to your, to your premise from the, uh, from the audience? What kind of questions did you get? You know, people actually responded very favorably, including some folks from the oil and gas industry, which I was, <laughs> I was pleased to, <laughs> to find. Uh, we have a lot of uh, customers in energy, so that was cool. Um, but what I, it was nice being here at MIT and just really geeking out about language and linguistics and, and data with a bunch of, of CDOs and other uh, people who are kind of data intellectuals. All right, so if data is not, uh, if data is, is not the, the new oil. Um, and water isn't really a good analogy either because the supply of water is finite. So That's true. What is, what is data? Yeah. In space? <laughs> yeah, it's a good Matter? point. M maybe it is like, like the universe <laughs> and that it's always expanding, right, somehow. Uh, right, because anything, any physics which is on the planet probably won't be growing at that, that exponential speed. So give uh, us the punchline. <laughs> well, so, so I would contend that water, while imperfect, is actually a really good uh, metaphor that helps mm -hmm. for a lot of things. It has properties like the fact that, uh, that if there's a data quality issue, it flows downstream, like, like, like pollution in a river. It, uh, it's the fact that it can come in different forms, useful for different purposes. You might have gray water, right, which is good enough for you know, irrigation or, or, or industrial purposes, but not safe, safe to drink. And so you rely on metadata to get uh, uh, the data that's in the right form. Um, and you know, the, the, the talk is more fun because there's a lot of visual yeah, examples of that ma make this clear. Yeah. Uh, I actually have 1% of the audience say that he uses similar analogy in, in his own company, so it's fun to trade notes. So Chief so Data Officer is a relatively new title for you, is it not, uh, in terms of, uh, of, of your role at Alation? Yeah, that's right, and the most fun thing about my job is being able to interact with all the other CDOs and CDAOs uh, at a conference like this. And it was cool to see, I believe this conference doubled since the last Year is that well, right? No, yeah. it's, it's it's up about 100 people though. Amazing. Well, when, yeah. when it's about double from three years ago. And, and when we first started um, in 2013, it was yeah, 130 like, people. Yeah, it was yeah. like a very, very small and, and intimate <laughs> event. So yeah, here yeah. we're outgrowing this building. It's yeah, 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 they're so kicking us out. <laughs> I think what's interesting is you know if we do a little bit of analysis, this is small data uh, uh, within our own company. You know, our, our biggest um, and most visionary customers typically bought Alation. Uh, the buyer champion either was a CDO or they weren't a CDO when they bought the software and have since been promoted to be a CDO. And so seeing this trend of more and more CDOs cropping up 
uh, is really exciting for us. And also just hearing all the people at the conference saying uh, two, two trends we're hearing, a move from sort of infrastructure and technology to driving business value, and a move from defense and governance to sort of playing offense and, and doing revenue generation with data. So Both those trends are really so exciting So don't hate us. me for asking this question, but so because a lot of what a lot of companies will do is they'll, they'll give somebody a CDO <laughs> title and it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a gimmick, right, to, yeah. to, to, go, to go to market and they'll drag you into sales calls, I'm sure they do as a co-founder. <laughs> Um, but as well, I know CDOs at tech companies that are actually trying to apply uh, new techniques, how to figure out how data contributes to their business, how they can cut costs, raise revenue. Do you have an internal role as well? Oh, absolutely, you yeah. Explain that. We, we uh, so Alation, you know, we're about 250 people, so we're not at the same scale as many of the attendees <laughs> here. <laughs> but we want to learn, you know, from the best and always apply everything that we learn internally as well. So obviously analytics, data science is a huge role in our internal operations. And so what, what kinds of initiatives are you, are you driving internally? Is it, is it sort of cost initiatives, efficiency, innovation? Yeah, I, I think it's all of the above, right? Every single division, and both in the sort of operational efficiency and cost cutting side, as well as figuring out the next big bet to make, can be informed by data. You know, our goal is to empower a curious and rational world and have every decision be based not on you know, the highest paid person's opinion, but on the best evidence possible. And so, you know, the goal of my function is largely to, to enable that, both centrally and within each business unit. I want to talk to you about data catalogs a bit because it's just it's a topic close to my heart. I've talked to a lot of data catalog companies over the last couple of years, and it seems like, it, for one thing, the market's very crowded right now, it seems to me. Would you agree? There are a lot of options out there? Yeah, you know, it's been interesting because when we started, we were basically the first company to make this technology and to kind of use this term data catalog in this way. And it's been validating to see, you know, a lot of big players and other startups even kind of coming to that terminology. But yeah, it has gotten more crowded. And I think our customers, who our prospects, who used to ask us, you know, what is it that you do? Explain this catalog metaphor to me. You're now saying, oh yeah, yeah, catalog. Right. Heard right. about that? To be Which one should anymore. I pick? Why you? What, yeah. what distinguishes one product from another? You know, what are the major differentiation points? Yeah, I think one thing that's interesting is, you know, my talk was about how the metaphors we use shape the way we think, and I think there's a sense in which kind of the history of each company shapes their philosophy and their approach. So we've always been a data catalog company, that's our one product. Um, some of the other catalog vendors come from an ETL background, so they're a lot more focused on technical metadata and infrastructure. Some of the catalog products grew out of governance, and so it's sort of governance first, you know, sort of defense first, and then offense uh, secondary. So I think that's, that's one of the things I think uh, we encourage our prospects to look at. It's kind of the, the, the soul of, of the company and how that affects their decisions. The other thing is, of course, technology, and, and what we at Alation are really excited about, and it's been validating to hear Gartner and others, and a lot of the people here, like the uh, GSK, a keynote speaker yesterday, mm -hmm. talking yeah. about the importance of, of comprehensiveness and on taking a behavioral approach, right? We have our behavior IO technology that really says, let's not look at all the bits and the bytes, but how are people using the data to drive results do, as our quite differentiator. Do, do, do your customers generally standardize on one data catalog or might they have multiple catalogs for multiple purposes? Yeah, you know, we, we heard a term uh, uh, more last season of catalog of catalogs. You know, and Great. people who can get arbitrarily, need. you know, meta, meta, metadata, yeah. we, we, we like to go there. Um, I think the customers we see most successful tend to have one catalog that serves this function of the single source of reference. Many of our customers will say, you know, that their catalog serves as sort of their internal Google for data, mm -hmm. or the, the one-stop shop where you can find everything. Even though it may have many, many different sources, typically you don't want to have siloed catalogs. It makes it harder to find what you're looking for. Let's play a little word association with some <laughs> metaphors. <laughs> data lake. <laughs> Data lake's another one that I sort of hate. <laughs> um, if you think about it, uh, people had data warehouses and didn't love them, but at least when you put something into a warehouse, you can get it out, <laughs> right? Uh, if you throw something into a lake, <laughs> you know, there's really no hope you're ever going to find it. It's probably not going to be in great shape. And we're not surprised to find that many folks who invested heavily in data lakes are now having to invest in, in a layer over it to make it comprehensible and searchable. So and yeah, the lake is where we hide the stolen cars. Um, <laughs> data swamp. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if your point is it's worse than lake, it works, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think we can do better than lake, right? How about data ocean? <laughs> uh, you know, out of respect for, for John Furrier, <laughs> I'll, I'll say it's fantastic. Ah, but, ah, but to, but to ah, us, ah. we think, you know, it isn't really about the size. The more data you have, people think, oh, the more data, the better. It's actually the more data, the worse, unless you have a mechanism for finding the little bit of data that is relevant and useful for your task and put it to use. Enter, what a setup, enter the catalog. So how, <laughs> how te technically, how does the catalog 
uh, solve that problem. Totally, so if we think about, maybe let's go to the warehouse for example, but it works just as well on a data lake yeah, cool. uh, uh, in practice. You know, the catalog is, it starts with the inventory, you know, what's on every single shelf, but if you think about what Amazon has done, they have the inventory warehouse in the back, but what you see as a consumer is a simple search interface where you type in the word of the product you're looking for, and then you see rank suggestions for, for different items, you know, toasters, lamps, whatever it is, you know, books I want to buy. Same thing for data. I can type in, you know, if I'm at the, at the DOD, you know, information about aircrafts or information about, you know, drug discovery if I'm at GSK. And I should be able to therefore see um, all the different data sets that I have. And uh, that's true in almost any catalog that you can do some search over the curated data sets there. With Alation in particular, what I can see is who's using it, how are they using it, what are they joining it with, what results do they find in that process. And that can really uh, accelerate the pace of, of discovery. And so Go ahead. I'm sorry, Dave. Uh, to, to what degree can you automate yeah. s uh, some, of, some of that detail, like who's using it and mm. what it's being used for? I mean, doesn't that rely on people curating the catalog, or to what degree can you automate that? Yeah, so it's a great question. We, I think sometimes there's a sense with AI or ML that it's like the computer is making the decisions or making things up, which is obviously very scary. Usually the training data comes from humans. So our goal is to learn from humans in two ways. There's learning from humans where humans explicitly teach you, like somebody goes and says this is gold standard data versus this is you know, low quality data, and they do that manually. But there's also learning implicitly from people. So in the same way on Amazon.com, if I buy one item and then buy another, I'm doing that for my own purposes. But Amazon can do collaborative filtering over all of these trends and say, you might want to buy this item. We can do a similar thing where we parse the query logs, parse the usage logs and BI tools, and can basically watch what people are doing for their own purposes, not to you know, extra work on top of their job to help us. We can learn from that and make everybody more effective. Aaron, is data classification a, a part of all this? Again, when we started in the industry, class, data classification was a manual exercise. Mm -hmm. um, it's always been a, a, a challenge. Certainly people have, have applied math to it. You've seen support vector machines and probabilistic latent semantic indexing <laughs> being used to, to classify data. Is, have we solved that problem as an industry? Can you automate the classification of data on creation or use at this point in time? Well, one thing that came up in a few talks about AI and ML here is regardless of the algorithm you're using, whether it's, you know, yeah, Naive yeah, Bayes or SVM yeah. or something really modern and exciting. Oh, stuff that's been learning. around forever or, like you say, some new yeah. stuff. Right? You know, actually, I think it was said best by, by Michael Collins at the, at the DOD that, that data is more important than the algorithm because even the best algorithm is useless without really good training data, plus the algorithm's kind of everyone's got them. So really often training data is the limiting reactant in getting really good classification. One thing we try to do at Alation is create an upward spiral where maybe some data is, is curated manually and then we can use that as a seed to make some suggestions about how to label other data and then it's easier to just do a confirm or, or, or deny of a guess than to actually manually label everything. So then you get more training data faster and it kind of accelerates that way instead of being a big buried engine. So that's really the advancement in the last five to whatever, five, six years mm -hmm. where you're able to use machine intelligence to sort of solve that problem as opposed to brute forcing it with some algorithm. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's right. And I think what gets me very excited is when you can have these interactive loops where the human helps the computer, which helps the human, and you get, again, this, this upward yeah, yeah. spiral. Instead of saying, oh, we have to have all this you know, manual step done before we can even do the first step, or trying to have an algorithm brute force it without any human intervention. It's kind of like no scheme on right, except it actually works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding to all my Hadoop friends. <laughs> all right, Aaron, hey, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. But last, give you a last word mm -hmm. on, on the event. I think it was, is this your first one, or no? This is our first time here. Yeah, okay, so and what are your thoughts? I think we'll be back. It's just so exciting to get people who are thinking really big about data, but are also practitioners who are solving real business problems, and just the exchange of, uh, of ideas and best practices has been really inspiring for me. Yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you for the support of the event, and uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. It's great to see you again. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, All right, Paul. you're welcome. Thanks, sir. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. Right after this short break, you're watching theCUBE from MIT CDO IQ. Be right back. <laughs>